So, who in here thinks that they're more of a half glass full kind of person? Anyone? Uh, or a half glass empty, really? Well, when some people say that they're a half glass full kind of person or a half glass empty kind of person, I usually say, oh, are you going to drink that? Or really, <laughs> or really be, uh, because of this, uh, people tend to look at things negatively or positively. You know, they don't, they don't view the situation as something to, you know, they need to get it done. They either, either complain about it or like, oh yeah, let's do this, you know. So, so with this, you know, you need to take advantage of the opportunity to achieve and thrive at that one particular, <clears throat> one particular, like, either object or skill or any of the other experiences that you need to know along the way. You know, like, say you're taking a drink of water, well, it's only half empty for now, but the more that's related to knowledge. If, if you put knowledge into your glass, you know, the more knowledge and wisdom that you may accumulate and stuff like that, the more personal and more well-known you become in your surroundings and all the other experiences that you may have. So I'm going to bring up topics about how the positives and negatives of seeing how something could be either, either great for you or how you look at it badly. So if you look at something negatively, you know, you think, oh man, this is going to suck, you know, why, why am I going to do this, you know. Um, uh, like say for instance, like uh, you have you have a big test coming up, and you don't and you and you haven't studied for it, you're just gonna wing it, you know. So you're gonna go into that test thinking, oh crap, you know, I'm gonna fail this, and you're not gonna expect much from yourself. Or you can look at it a different way. You can either study for it and think think of something like, oh, I'm gonna pass this test and be more confident with yourself. And usually, if you're more confident with yourself, you achieve more. You know, you have more confidence, you have more drive in your personal experiences. Also, I'm also going to bring how that if in your personal life, if you look at things half empty or half full, you'll see a difference in changes in how the way you look at things. So if you, if you see, if someone, if someone gives you, like say, five dollars, but, but then but then, but you want more. It's kind of like the same way of the greed of humanity with, with wanting more or wanting less. Now, a lot, a lot of people say, does anyone want less in here? I doubt that anyone wants less. No, everyone wants more, right? So, with, so with the, if someone hands you $5, well, it's better than nothing. You know, you gotta think of that positively. But then, so there's also negative con connotations to it. Say, oh, it's only $5, you know, I want 10. You know, like you want twice as much of the actual value that someone gave you. You know, that's it's kind of helps with that with a lot of things. You know, like when a lot of critics, if you say, like uh, take take ideas or topics of how they always bring up the negatives and the positives of everything. You know, even with uh, let's say movies, for instance. Um, you know, critics will bring up the negatives of the movie. And all the all say, oh, this movie had terrible sales. You know, no one wanted to see it. But the positives of it, you know, some actors did really well, and they helped improve the movie along the way. But in the end, it didn't appeal to the public very generally. Now, with your half, with your glass half full, you always you're always thinking of a pot, positive side of life. You know, you always want to achieve more. Like I said, you want to achieve more experience, you want to gain new information, you want to meet new people, you want to experience the things that you've never done before. With your glass half empty, you always want to not do much. You always want to be lackadaisical and not just sit there and like, well, I could do this or I can do this instead and just sit there and just mope about, you know, like, oh man, life sucks. You know, I want to be a loner for the rest of my life. You know, um, this is boring. You know, no one wants a Debbie Downer, so, you know, sort of say. Everyone wants to be either positive. You know, there's always negatives that will bring you down. But in the end, it's always how you look upon life in general. Thank you.
when we're doing these with the other topics, you won't have to give the topics back. You'll be able to keep them. Oh. But today I need them back because we because I didn't bring the regular topics. So, and they printed on both sides, so it's a little bit of an issue. All right, well, you did use the quote as your attention device, but you were, did a nice twist on it, so I thought it worked out okay. It's not too big a problem there. And uh, it does sound like you have a point that you're trying to make at the beginning. I'm not sure that that point stays clear throughout the speech, and at the end it was a little bit less certain than I thought it was at the beginning of the speech. Uh, there's a little bit of a preview, so that's okay. Uh, the content stuff, again, I've said this to other people and I'm going to say it to you. Uh, the more specific you can be, the easier it will be for you to talk about it. When you keep it at an abstract level, it gets a little bit harder to figure out things. And you, you know, you've got this invented five dollars that you're finding or you've got, uh, you know, the movie example came up and I'm going, okay, pick a movie, talk about one, you know, talk about one that didn't get good reviews but did good business and that you liked and how they're focusing on the negative or go the other direction and say, you know, they made all this money but they ignored the fact that the movie completely sucked or something. I mean, and, and talk about a movie that you saw that fit in that category as opposed to some vague hypothetical movie that we're talking about. Everything that stays abstract remains hard to be interested in and it's harder for you to talk about than if you talk about something that you've got a real experience on. All right, uh, delivery issues for the most part. Your voice is fine. There's a good variety in projection. I think your eye contact is pretty solid. You're almost always looking at the audience. Uh, your gestures, at first they were very repetitive. They were all kind of in this same range and area. The longer you went, you got a little bit more involved. It wasn't the same. You weren't, it was not like the parallel arms having to move occasionally. Your arms moved separate from one another and they were a little bit more expansive. And so you seemed like you were relaxing a little bit with those sorts of gestures. Uh, the one place where there's anxiety coming out and nervousness, I don't know if you're gonna, do you, do you know what it is? Okay, I'm going to make the smart-ass comment. You should take up the hula. Oh. Because you are swaying constantly throughout the presentations, back and forth and back. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like you're shifting your weight constantly. That's where all of your energy is coming out. So you need to you know, channel that energy a little bit more into some more facial expressions, earlier gestures. Uh, like I said, I didn't offer any strong criticism of your voice, but sometimes maybe a little bit more emphasis. Think about how you're putting the, that energy into the presentation, and I think you'll be better off. Not bad. I thought you did a good job on almost everything. Like I said, that was the one thing, but that was, when you watch back, you're gonna, it's going to annoy you. <laughs> okay, thank you.